far, we've reviewed nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs, and suffixes at the ends of those words. Let's look at some uh, examples to review. Uh, we have that meant, which derives a noun from a verb, uh, govern to government. Uh, the en, which derives a verb from an adjective, such as bright and brighten. Uh, able, which derives an adjective from a verb, uh, such as manage and manageable. And that ly, uh, to derive an adverb from adjectives. Very flexible, uh, quick, quickly, and so on. Uh, all these suffixes change one part of speech into another. And since these suffixes derive one part of speech from another, uh, they are typically called uh, derivational suffixes. Uh, there is another category of suffixes called inflectional suffixes. Uh, in English, these include uh, these samples here. Uh, S, uh, ED, uh, ING. Uh, these suffixes do not change the parts of the speech of the words. Uh, nouns stay nouns and verbs stay verbs. Instead, they change the words in terms of grammatical features, uh, such as nouns being plural, a verb being past tense, uh, or uh, progressive. Uh, there are different types of inflectional suffixes for different parts of speech, and I'm going to discuss a few of the main ones in English. Uh, first, we can make most nouns plural by adding the inflectional uh, s on them, and uh, we'll look at some simple samples there. Uh, a phone, singular, uh, three phones, plural. An app, singular, you add the s, and the noun becomes uh, plural. Again, the noun doesn't change, just the feature and meaning of it, a grammatical feature, plurality. Uh, as for verbs, uh, they can take inflectional suffixes with, which express verb tense uh, and also agreement uh, in the present or past tenses. Uh, when a verb has a plural subject, such as we, uh, the verb does not take an S. But uh, when the subject is singular, he or she or the worker, uh, we need that S on the verb. Uh, it's uh, present tense. Uh, singular uh, a subject. Uh, we can also add ed and uh, on verbs and uh, it becomes a past tense verb. Again, the verb doesn't change its part of speech. It stays a verb, but it is part, uh, marked as past tense verb. Uh, with ing, the same thing. Uh, the verb tense uh, changes, uh, not the part of speech exactly. Uh, it can even be in the past, was, uh, but in this case, it's, uh, again, progressive with that ing. Finally, with adjectives, um, we can uh, make an adjective comparative with er, or we can make it a superlative with that est. So uh, some quick samples, uh, fast to faster and large to larger, and uh, many more monosyllabic words, and I won't explain that right now. You'll cover that later. Uh, est. Uh, we can take those words fast to fastest, large to largest. Again, these remain adjectives. It's just that their uh, grammatical semantics have changed. Now, watch out. Uh, we can identify parts of speech by the parts of the word, such as in these derivational and flexional suffixes. But that's not always enough. Sometimes they can have the same sounds with different functions. So, for example, uh, ER uh, can be uh, for, uh, to derive a, uh, a noun from a verb, swim to swimmer, uh, but as we just saw, ER is also for the comparative. So in addition to these parts of words, we need to look more at the way the words are used in clauses and phrases, which we'll do in the next video.